Hey there, I'm the professor. Let's talk more about this water footprint. Did you know the total amount of water on the planet never actually changes? It's true. The water cycle is constantly moving the water around from liquids to solids to gases and back again. These are called phase changes. But no matter what phase the water is in, the total quantity of water remains the same. Water consumption, in simpler terms, is a matter of circulation. Unlike fossil fuels, water doesn't get used up. Fossil fuels took millions of years to form, so for all intents and purposes, they're not renewable. Water, on the other hand, is cycled between the phases as we mentioned, and is probably the reason life can exist on this planet to begin with. It's easier to think of as a library. One massive library filled with one book printed thousands of times. Sure, there's plenty of supply, and like any library, you're only renting the book for a short period of time. But what if thousands of people check out the book at the same exact time? The shelves will empty until the circulation cycle can catch up. So the more and more people that enter or interrupt the cycle, the longer it takes to replenish, creating scarcity. We know that it takes 140 liters to produce a cup of espresso coffee, but how do we get that number? Let's go to the source to find out. So let's look at how we got to that number. As we all know, our beloved coffee beverage derives from processed beans that grew within the cherry that grew within the plant, the coffee tree. And like any other plant, it needs water to grow and produce its fruits. So the first and greatest contribution to water consumption is used in cultivating the tree itself, using 117 liters in the process. Once the plant grows and it has its perfectly red cherries, like these. The coffee producers harvest them and has to make a decision whether to do a wet processing or dry processing. Farmers typically stick with one processing technique and repeat it every year. So what's wet processing and what is its water footprint? In general terms, wet process consists in removing the pulp, also known as the exocar, mechanically in what is known as a wet processing plant. These machines basically remove the fruity parts so you have something that looks like this. Coffee beans surrounded by parchments and mucilage, which is a thick sticky substance enriched with sugars. In order to remove all the mucilage, which is insoluble in water, the coffee is left to ferment in the tanks according to the producer's recipe and then washed. Finally, coffee is laid to dry usually in concrete patios or African beds. After this, dried coffee is hauled, polished and sorted to obtain the green beans. This all uses another 19 liters of water per espresso coffee, bringing the total to 136 liters. Then, this coffee needs to get to the roaster's hands to be converted into the final product, roasted coffee beans. And then, the coffee is delivered to the highly trained barista to prepare the beverage. But as you can see, 140 liters of water have already been used to prepare just one espresso for you. For whatever coffee the beverage you drink, over 90% of the content in a cup is water. Needless to say, coffee is a social beverage and drinking it forms part of a person's lifestyle. Coffee preparation varies across the world. It depends on the consumer's customs and preferences, but above all, to their culture. Each method has its own way of brewing, and so may use more or less quantity of coffee, water, or even milk. This means that each type of drink has its own water footprint. Here, take a look. As you can see, drip and pour over coffees use significantly more water per gram of coffee because the final drink has more volume. Let's take a closer look at a couple of these examples. You can find a very popular method nowadays called Chemix. Very popular in specialty coffee shops around the world like USA or South American countries. 
This method uses approximately 450 milliliters of water per 22 grams of medium to coarse ground coffee. This gives a ratio of water to coffee of 21 to 1. The second famous infusion method which uses larger quantity of water is the French press. For instance, for 290 milliliters of water, you will use around 15 grams of medium ground coffee, which will give a ratio of water to coffee of 20 to 1. This way of preparing and drinking coffee is common in France and more recently in South American countries. Now we have the famous espresso. This beverage is the beverage par excellence in Italy and many other European countries. We can also find espresso drinkers in North America and in much lower proportions in the rest of the world. An espresso is composed of 25 to 30 milliliters of water and 6.5 to 7.5 grams of fine ground coffee. This gives us a ratio of water to coffee of 4 to 1. Hey, welcome back! So, how can we reduce our water footprint? Well, what seems to be the most obvious answer is use less water. So take shorter showers, turn the faucet off while you're brushing your teeth, or washing the dishes. But, it's also way more complicated than that. The water you use while showering is treated and returned to the water cycle relatively quickly, compared with farm and industry usage. So, unless you're a farmer or an industrial plant manager, you really can't recover all that much water. So, dare to think bigger. Make sure you're electing people to your government that will make the environment a priority. Influence your local community to take collective action as well. Your individual contribution is magnified for each neighbor you enlist. But, we can also influence the market with our purchasing decisions. Companies respond to changes in consumer demand. So drive that demand towards water efficiency, purchase responsibly produced products whenever possible, and consider whether your decisions are affecting your water footprint. And if you want to know more, go where we went, waterfootprint.org. Easy to remember and very helpful. So, using what we've learned, now we can make smarter choices. Like drinking more espressos, which have a smaller water footprint, are always made fresh, and above all, they're really tasty.